Hello and welcome back to our cottage garden. I'm going to give you a tour today, show you some things that I've been working on and some things that are coming up soon as well. So I thought we'll start down here. Um, we've had a bit of rain recently so it's been nice we've got a bit of colour back into the garden compared to when I last showed you around and everything was looking really dry. Um, but we are going into, well we're in autumn now so there's a lot of yellow around the garden as well and you can see a lot of the plants are starting to turn, starting to lose their leaves and it's looking quite nice and cosy. So um, the clematis is doing really well. I actually trimmed a little bit of this yesterday because it's been going um, quite crazy over the last few weeks, but in spring this will look really amazing. And behind me, um, the erigeron has suddenly come back to life and I always go on about this, but I love having it in the garden because it goes through so many flushes of flowers um, and it's looking really, really good at the moment. I've been tidying up this area. So this is our herb garden and we grow strawberries here as well. Um, I've tidied up the strawberries recently so I discarded loads of the plants, cut all the runners off and just gave those a good tidy, took some of the big old leaves off and then in the spaces in between them I've been putting bulbs in so here I'm growing daffodils and I mentioned in my last video I've had a hard time growing tulips in this space or at least getting them to come back every year because of how damp it is. So I'm giving a go with daffodils and hopefully those will come back every year. We'll see how we go but at least they'll look pretty this spring regardless. Um, trimmed the wisteria, trimmed the lavender, trimmed the rosemary, trimmed the mint, just getting into that time of year where everything can be tidied up and because we're going into autumn things are not growing as quickly so you feel like you can actually start to get on top of things which is good because summer does stress me out um, trying to keep everything neat and tidy and I never really do so I, I just let things go wild and then this time of year I start tidying things up a bit more and just enjoying the autumn colours so that's more or less everything for this part of the garden let's go up and I'll show you the rest. So in our first bit of garden, I've talked about this a bit before, but I'm trying to build up a stock of things that will flower for a long time and then develop the borders so that they flower later in the season. So I've added some Japanese anemones in here and I actually added these last year, um, but they didn't flower last year and this is the first time they're flowering now. So it's really nice to see those. They're just a plain white Japanese anemone. There's only two of them, but I've been told that they spread quite aggressively. Um, so there should be a lot more of those next year, but it's still nice to see. We've had a lot of plants giving us um, another flush. So we've got this amazing, amazing Wajila shrub, which is um, just behind you. And in early summer, it's covered in these pink flowers. And then uh, as we go into autumn, it sometimes gives us another flush of flowers, which it's doing now. Really good for the bees, but nice to look at, nice bit of color. Um, we've got delphinium that's flowering, and I love that they do this. If you cut them back down to the ground after their first flush, flush of flowers, they flower again in September, October time. Uh, this one is called Cinderella delphinium, and it's a dwarf delphinium, so it doesn't get too leggy, and it's this amazing soft pink colour. I absolutely love those. Um, I did plant about eight of them, but this is the only one that survived, I think. We've also got a few roses around, so Queen Elizabeth, um, the Floribunda rose is looking really good. It's just starting to go over now, but there are a few more buds, so we can expect a few more flowers. Same with Olivia Rose Austin. Um, and I think this time I won't deadhead them. I will leave the um, flowers on there to develop into rose hips because they're really good for food for the birds throughout winter. And they're quite pretty as well. They add a little bit of color uh, when everything else has disappeared from the garden. Another thing is we've got our first hellebores flowering and this is really really early for hellebores. They don't tend to flower until February kind of time uh, in the earlier months of the new year. Um, but this variety more or less flowers continuously and the only reason they haven't done this year is because I dug them up to divide them uh, and then I shared them with my friends and put them back in. So they've just started to um, look well again and there's a lot of flowers on those. They look really lovely. Um, they're not the most beautiful of hellebores but I keep them in the garden just so that uh, for the amazement of having them flowering all the time and that's more or less an update for this bit of the garden. Uh, there are a few things I want to do so I've got this Olivia Rose Austin um, in a pot and I need to decide whether I'm gonna pull it up, refresh the compost and put it back in the pot or whether I'm gonna move it. I'm not sure so if you have any ideas uh, let me know because I really love having it in this pot here but it gets a little bit too shaded from the tree that's over it. Um, and you'll also notice that tree is starting to go red. We've got some uh, the beginnings of really nice autumn colour. Uh, so let's go up and I'll show you the rest of the garden. In this middle part of the garden, there's not too much going on at the moment, um, but it's quite nice to look at while the leaves are all changing colour, especially on the plum trees. They're the first ones to drop their leaves. So they're all looking really yellow at the moment and it won't be long until the ground is 
is completely covered in the leaves. Uh, we do remove them from the grass just so that it doesn't get too muddy. Um, and we either add them to the compost bin or we put them straight on the flower beds and use it as a mulch. So last year I actually just got a leaf blower and I just blew all the leaves onto the beds and then they rotted down over the next few months and fed the plants and I think that's a really good way to do it. I used to collect them in a leaf mulch bin um, but it was a lot of work for kind of similar results so I prefer to just um, use a leaf blower and blow them onto the beds. Um, but plant wise there's not a lot of interesting things going on it's just nice to notice the colour um, and I love sitting up against the greenhouse this time of year with a cup of tea and just watching the garden and listening to the birds um, or the ducks. <laughs> you might be able to hear the ducks now they're just having a forage for some slugs behind me. Um, but yeah, that's uh, all I've got to report on in this part of the garden. Let's go and continue upwards. So this is something I've been working on this week. And uh, this is an area of the garden that's mostly shady, apart from in the earlier months of the year. Um, so I've been a bit torn over what to do with this space. And when we moved in, it was completely covered in ivy and some lilies that had um, just spread absolutely everywhere. It took me a really long time to dig them out and uh, find all of the tubers because the tubers underground would snap and turn into new plants. So three years in, I finally got rid of the lilies. Um, they weren't really ever flowering here anyway because it's such a shady spot and they need a bit of sunlight. So what I've done is I've left in the aguilegias which have um, mostly self-seeded. I know someone planted one of them at some point because I found a tag on it while I was clearing the space and then in the gaps I've added loads of hellebores so I'm hoping that uh, in the winter this will be one of the first interesting beds and I love hellebores so much so I can't wait to see what this looks like when they're flowering um, but the other good thing is they give you evergreen foliage so it should mean there's something kind of covering the soil at least in the summer months um, but this isn't really a border that we pay too much attention to and I think that's probably the best way to make the most of the space and we've also got these um, primroses you can just see them starting to appear out of the soil now and I bought these uh, from Iford Manor Gardens I think last year uh, when they were having a plant sale and they're such a nice colour I'm not sure of the variety but they're similar to the Cinderella Delphinium that I showed you a really soft pinky purple colour um, and I just find them absolutely stunning double petaled um, so they're a really lovely flower and then there is still a large empty bit here I don't know what to put in there I'm thinking maybe some tall ferns um, maybe some hostas, something that's happy in shade, maybe just more hellebores, um, but I would like to screen the ugly trellis at the back somehow. Um, I will be letting the ivy scramble all over this trellis because it uh, does really well here, as you can see, it's um, covering the trees at the moment and the flowers are so good for the bees. If you look up there and watch them, you can just see continuous um, a hive of, of beeves just swarming all over the flowers and it feels like that's quite a rare thing to see this time of year so it's a good thing to leave in the garden uh, in moderation there are definitely places where we want to get rid of it but here I'm going to encourage it to cover this screen and I don't think it would take long because there is quite a lot of it on the ground I just need to encourage it to grow upwards um, but that's my update made for this bed I think it would be nice to add some snowdrop bulbs here as well but I've noticed this year they're a bit expensive so maybe that will be a project for next year um, and now we can go up to the next bit of the garden. So in this part of the garden, there are a few things I've been working on recently. Um, the first one is adding bulbs. So I'll link to my bulb un unboxing video in case you missed that. But I have done about 250 bulbs so far. Um, I've done as many woodland anemones um, as I could around the base of this oak tree. And then I've also done some snake's head fritillaries in this area, which I let grow into a wildflower meadow in the spring. So I'm really excited to see those. Um, the ground's absolutely covered with acorns at the moment from the oak tree. So you quite often see squirrels running around and taking those, which is really, really lovely. Um, I've been building up the stock of Japanese anemones in the borders here. Um, I don't think we're gonna get any flowers from those this year. I'd like to be wrong about that, but um, nothing so far. But again, that will be something to look forward to next year. Um, and I've also added things like ferns, um, some more hellebores again. I love hellebores and I just want to plant them everywhere so that in those winter months there is something to look forward to. Uh, you'll notice that there's plum leaves falling all over the grass at the moment so this is definitely the beginning. Um, what we tend to do when the leaves are in this sort of quantity is just mow over them and then they'll go in the compost bin 
but um, when the oak tree decides to drop its leaves that's when the ground will be completely covered that will probably be in a month's time they're not really looking too yellow yet they're still very green um, and then we also have this acer tree which goes a really gorgeous red color it's definitely i think that's probably our best tree for autumn so that's one to look forward to as well um, but i'd say overall i'm not really someone who focuses on late summer early autumn in the garden um, and i'd like to be so i think it, over the next few years that's something i, I definitely want to work on um, because as you'll notice looking at these borders not much going on um, but i have added things like salvias um, that should give us long season interest and again lots more japanese anemones um, the helianthus lemon queen the perennial sunflower things that do flower <laughs> this time of year so next year again things to look forward to but it's always a delayed gratification with gardening but looking around you can just see signs of autumn everywhere um, the hostas have started to turn yellow and die back same with the um, clematis that I climb up these trees everything's realized that it's autumn and is turning warm colors which is just really nice to look at so here we are in the polytunnel and I know I have very rarely showed you this in our garden tours because it has been a disaster this year. Barely anything's worked. I don't know why. Um, but now that uh, we're into autumn, I've decided I'm going to be using this for growing um, winter brassicas. So I've got a lot of cabbage in here and some year round cauliflowers as well um, and some Cavolo Nero. Uh, and that should give us a little bit to see us through the winter. And these darn potatoes have popped up again. I thought I dug them all out um, a few months ago, but I must just keep missing them. So I'm gonna try and get those out for good because they are a nightmare and they are really getting in the way. Um, we've still got tomato plants, which is amazing because usually we'd be having blight by now, um, but we haven't had any signs of blight. Um, but on the flip side, the tomatoes haven't really been ripening either. So I haven't really been harvesting them. I know I've had a few that have ripened, um, but I've just left them out here. It looks like we might have a few cherry tomatoes I could take in, but when it's like five at a time, it's not really worthwhile um, keeping a close eye on them. So a lot of them have gone over, uh, or the few that I've had have gone over. But the things that I've put in this year to start building up um, the perennial side of things have been doing really well so we've got the chamomile that carpets the floor i've just given that a trim back because it's finished um, for the season we've got the cherry tree which is looking really well grapevine hasn't really done anything hopefully next year it will i'm hoping under the soil it might have been putting in some growth because it definitely hasn't above the soil the pomegranate bush is looking lovely and red it didn't look too well this year and i think it's because i've swamped it with other things i've got parsley and a cabbage there um but it's survived, that's the main thing. So hopefully next year we'll do a bit better. We've got one pepper <laughs> out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight plants, nine, ten plants. We've had one pepper. Um, so a bad year for peppers. But I'm thinking of keeping the plants uh, and bringing them inside for the winter and then using them next year because I've heard that that works for people and I'd like to just give it a go. So that will probably be something that I do as we start getting frosts. I'll dig them out and cut the leaves off and put them in pots. Um, We've had probably the most successful thing has been this pumpkin plant. I think this is possibly Crown Prince. Um, it's a really nice blue pumpkin. It should be nice and orange inside. Still growing, um, so we'll just leave that one to do its thing. Um, and the tomatoes that we do have now, they're looking really lovely and big, but I'm just wondering whether they're going to ripen in time because they're definitely not ripe. But it's been such a, year, a weird year for tomatoes. I've had having no blight has been amazing but the plants are just so small and nothing's been ripening and then the time when we were having a lot of flowers we had a heat wave that singed the flowers off so we didn't get much fruit lemon trees are looking good and then we've got the dahlias at the back there um, those are just starting to flower i can see wizard of oz has got some lovely flowers on it um, and again loads of tomatoes at the back and i haven't even bothered tying these in because the plants are so small um, usually i would tie them on um, to the crop bars at the top and train them to grow up but there's just been no point because they're not growing <laughs> so we might have a handful of tomatoes yet to come um, I've sown things like lettuces I've sown some spinach and a few seeds have been popping up here or there but I just did that to clear out my um, seed cupboard so some of them are quite old seeds they might not have been viable but I'm hoping that we'll get enough in here to see us through the winter but of course if we move the ducks in they will <laughs> destroy everything that's got leaves on it so it won't be a problem for the cherry tree because that will be dormant um, I might put cloches over the lemon trees but if I am thinking of growing spinach and kale there's no chance if we're having the ducks in here so it will be either or and uh, most likely 
hopefully we will move the ducks in here in the winter. But now I'll show you how our raised bed garden is doing, which is doing a lot better. So here we are in our vegetable garden and look at this asparagus, it's absolutely beautiful. I love when it starts to go yellow and it's this amazing colour. Um, and this is our good asparagus bed. We've actually got two, uh, the other one's been less successful. Um, this is the, the early bed and the other one is a late asparagus. Um, really not sure what to do about the other bed, whether I dig it out and try and start again. But after this has finished turning yellow, um, we will be cutting it back down to the ground, giving it a good mulch, uh, and you're supposed to burn these to stop any overwintering asparagus beetle larvae, so we will be doing that as well. Um, but they're so lovely. I love growing asparagus, such a rewarding thing to have in the garden, and quite maintenance-free as well. And I've got this underplanted with strawberries, so I think I'm going to have to definitely clear out some of these strawberry plants while they're sending runners out. But this year hasn't been too bad for strawberry runners. Last year I was really, really swamped by them, but there's not been too many, so it won't be too big of a job. Um, and I've decided I, for the time being, I'm not going to fill these new beds right to the top with soil because I don't want to dig out these well-established asparagus plants. I may do for the other one. I might try and start again. But I'm just a bit cautious because you do have to wait for two or three years before you can harvest your asparagus and both beds have been full of them for three years and I know if I start again on the bad one it delays harvesting time by such an amount so I'm not sure what to do there. Uh, any advice is welcome on that but yeah I thought I would show you these because they're looking really lovely and then in the other beds everything's doing so well here now we've got the perennial kale um, which is looking lovely that one's called dorbenton's kale with the variegated leaf i've got a young plant there in the cloche which i took from a cutting and it's now rooted um, and then i raised the um, soil level in both of these beds and planted all of the bulbules from my egyptian walking onions um, so those have started appearing and there's so many and they're such a good size they just look really really good so i'm super pleased with that and I also divided my chive plants and scattered them along the edge of the other beds. And it looks like we had a second wind for nasturtiums. I felt like this year wasn't very good for nasturtiums. And then a couple of weeks ago, I came outside and it looked like they'd all suddenly picked up and done amazingly. And the nasturtiums in the onion bed, uh, I covered in <laughs> about a foot of soil. And I just thought, okay, that's it for them. They're not coming back. And they somehow got through the soil. Um, and they're looking really good. So that's good. Um, I'll just let them self-seed everywhere. They do a really good job here of self-seeding. You find them popping up even in the lawn sometimes. Um, they do that well at self-seeding, so we're really pleased with those. It's time to collect our sweet pea seeds as well that I'm keeping. Um, and then the Jerusalem artichoke's doing good, but they haven't flowered yet, so I want to see them flower this year, hopefully. Um, I've heard they can get about 10 feet tall, so if that's true, they've still got a bit of growing to do. We'll see how they get on. Um, but they're still a lovely plant and we've yet to try them. So I really hope we like the taste, but that's more or less an update for you. I've still got a bit of tidying to do and I will be adding um, tulips to this area. I like growing tulips along the base of these beds. So I've got um, a mix of bright red and yellow tulips. I thought if I'm going for muted colors elsewhere in the garden, I'm gonna try hot colors somewhere and let's just put some here and see if we like it or not. So I've got 150 of those, I think, um, that I'll just be planting mixed all over the edge of these beds um, that should give us something to look at next spring but that's more or less it for this part of the garden and I'll quickly show you the orchard next. Here we are in the orchard and we've done our harvest now so we've got uh, loads of apples um, and we did film that so I'll link to a video in case you'd like to watch and the leaves are starting to turn on the cherry trees so there's a bit of yellow there. Um, apple trees are still looking nice and green though. Um, that poor pear tree looks exhausted and I think it probably can't wait to have a rest over winter um, but soon I will be adding bulbs to this area so I have um, ice follies which is a daffodil um, I'm going to be adding some more clumps of those around and then I've also got our native um, daffodil which is called pseudo narcissus I'll be adding some of those as well um, and the reason for that is because they are the only variety that are useful to pollinators so I wanted to add something uh, here that would be good for the pollinators and I've also got loads of camassia bulbs um, so those will be going in soon lots to look forward to and lots I've got to be getting on with and this is the area that overwhelms me the most because there's still so much tidying to do uh, and there's ivy and brambles covering about a quarter of this space it's a really big space and I feel like I can never get on top of it um, but I'll give it a go I'll do my best um, and I know the spring bulbs will look really nice and it will incentivize me to get up here and start tidying up some of the messier stuff 
And then also in these borders, I've got loads of tulips to go in. So I'm going to be doing that over the next couple of weeks. So we've got loads to look forward to, um, but I hope you've enjoyed having a look around at the start of autumn. And we'll definitely show you again in a month's time as these leaves all start to change and fall and we'll collect up that lovely leaf mulch and there'll be lots of colors to look at. So thanks so much for watching. And if you enjoy watching these videos, be sure to give us a subscribe and we'll see you next time.